Hey traders, Dennis Wilburn, the Autopilot Trader. Welcome to this session of Trade Your Way to Wealth and Financial Freedom. As you can see, I'm on the road. Uh, and so this is a recorded session. It was not live. A couple of things I want to share with you. If you are a serious trader or you trade for a living, how do you take your trading on the road? I've got three tips that will help you hopefully uh, avoid the angst of taking your trading on the road and we'll do that today in today's session plus see if there's any stocks that are worth trading because right now it's kind of be cautious be careful um, I'm finding that quick easy ETF trades have been paying off exceptionally well I'll share a couple of those to show you what we're looking at so let's get into today's session right now Good day, everybody. This is Dennis Wilburn, the Autopilot Trader. As I said in the intro, I'm going to be covering three tips on how to trade while you're on vacation or traveling. And you may be surprised by what I'm going to tell you. It will probably be shocking to most of you, especially if you have an addiction to trading. So let's get into today's session. The market today was ugly, ugly, ugly. Matter of fact, the market was kind of ugly all week long. Uh, Again, remember that all materials we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. So what the heck happened with the market today? Uh, we're halfway through the month of October, and we're expecting to get a rebound. We've gotten a little bit of one uh, on my earnings, but the markets themselves have not turned back around, as you can see. Uh, how have I made up for what I, you know, the small loss that I had in September? Primarily by trading inverse leverage ETFs. That's what we do with the autopilot trading service. And if that's something you might be interested in, you need to take a test flight with us. So here's where we, we were at as of last week on the 7th. Uh, we're beating the market by approximately 59%. And this is where we, this is where we are today. Um uh, just about it didn't go very much of anywhere this whole week as far as traction goes, but the markets continued to fall. So we're beating the S&P by 61. I want to call to your attention a couple of items that uh, we need to be at least aware of. I won't say necessarily concerned about, but it is certainly something to be you know, uh, aware of. One, the tech stocks are getting their butts handed to them big time. Two, the next weakest is the Russell. Now, the S&P, you know, it is continuing to slip. You know, once it slipped into bear market territory at 20%, it has continued to inch its way down. And then last but not least, the Dow, which is, of course, only made up of a few stocks rather than the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, or the Russell 2000 is and these are more or less a lot more value type stocks it ha it's kind of like flirting with bear market territory hasn't dropped into it totally at this point but it's been it's stuff it's stuck its toe in the water of the bear market territory several times and so what does that tell us about where things are going to go let's go ahead and go over and take a look at the uh, Let's so go ahead and take a look at the indexes. But first, I want to share with you a couple of things. One is, how do you trade when you're on travel? Well, here's the tip number one is, don't. <laughs> Especially if you're on a family vacation, guys. Use some, you know, guys or gals, either one. Use some common sense. You're out there to enjoy your family. So the fact of the matter is just don't. Uh, if you are trading a mechanical system, you can lay, you know, I leave in the trades that I already had established. Let the mechanical system work. I mean, that's exactly how why I designed it like that. So number one is don't. Number two, reduce the focus. If you have to be in the market, reduce the focus to just a few. So for the next two weeks, I'm traveling all around the United States. What am I going to do? I'm going to be primarily be focused only on the ETFs, I have seven of them, so it's a lot easier to keep track of those. And then number two, the small top five running list, 
That's all I have to watch. I do not have to be out there searching for new stocks and all that kind of stuff. But if you're constantly searching for new stocks, you don't want to do it while you're traveling because you know it'll drive you nuts. I mean, it really will drive you nuts. Number three is if you are, if you insist on on searching for stocks and all that kind of stuff, schedule review time outside of family time, especially if you're doing the vacation thing. And and get family buy-in because if trust me if you know if you don't disappoint your kids don't disappoint your grandkids by having your nose in on on your uh, laptop checking out stocks and all that kind of stuff because i can trust you no matter how beautiful the most beautiful stock chart is nothing is going to be more beautiful than your own children your own spouse and your grandchildren trust me i'm a i'm a papa and my five grandkids are the most beautiful, beautiful kids in the world. And so, again, if you're going to, so those are three things that you need to do if you're going to be trying to trade while you travel. Let's see what else we have going on here. Um, let's look at the see, I'm working with a, uh, not a, a I have one screen. That's all I have. Normally, I have three screens to be able to work with, and it's okay. We'll, we'll make it work. We'll get through. So let's take a look at one of the first stocks, the, the, the uh, S&P first. Let's look at, look at the indexes. And the thing that I'll be able to show you is not only what's happening with the indexes, but also where is it likely to go? Where is it likely to go? Um, what we saw this past week was very enlightening in that the indexes or the s p found support at a look to your left at a past level of buying level and it bounced nice bounce on thursday this is a bullish engulfing a big bullish engulfing with huge volume but then today what happens we get right up into the eight correction 20-day moving average it reverses almost immediately, heads down. A, a tip, when the market, when the price action is below the 200, it is below the 50, it is you know below the other ones, you may be able to trade a counter trend trade, but where is it going likely? The likelihood of where it's going, just right straight back up into the moving averages. It may be the 8, it may be the 20, it may be even the 50. I was anticipating this past week or this uh, last week that we would get a relief rally all the way up to the 50. Didn't happen. And this is a nice sell off. So we have, we have a mixed market here. And the mix, mixture is this. Um, it's one. We took out this low. This low here and this low here. That's significant. In that, but we only did it intra-week intraday and then it rebounded so that's positive so we're kind of in a mix the psi the momentum indicator here on the daily chart is actually starting to point up so that's kind of interesting will that be what you know will the momentum shifting to the upside give us our end of year rally we're getting pretty darn close to it Reminds me back in 2008, uh, the market had sold off very, very significantly. And it wasn't until actually December that the indexes themselves went on a 20% run. The S&P went on a 20% run. And that was on the non-leveraged, you know, the regular S&P index. So that's what we've got going there. What's the projection on where we are likely to go? That's always a good thing to ask. Let's take a look at the monthly chart here on the S&P. And with this, we want to grab, I would just grab a Fibonacci real quick. As you can see, on the longer term chart, this looks very, you know, it is still heading down. We have no clue as to when momentum is going to shift long term. Weekly, showing a little bit like we could be getting close to a shift approximately, but we don't know exactly when. The, uh, so I was listening to Mark Minabini, and he was saying, stay out of trying to pick the bottom. It will do nothing but get you in trouble. 
So what we have is actually I'm going to jump over here to the before I do this I'm going to jump over here to the the uh, the cues because it gives us a better picture, similar picture but a better picture I believe. And so as you can see, similar type pattern cues much weaker than the uh, S and P didn't get up to the 20 day moving average and then totally reversed and is heading down. We broke the low of that swing low right there. That's significant. Even though we broke it just intraday, where are we likely? Where are some of the projections to the downside? Use your Fibonacci's and just cover that period there. Remember, this is a, uh, that's a month. So that's about 24 months. That's from uh, uh, August 2020 all the way up until January or November, uh, December 2021 through that and then tag it off tap it off on the way down and the thing to be looking for is okay 219 168 and of course look to your left what do you see over here yes those were areas where we bounced off of and so it's very interesting the fibonacci's line up with past levels of support where buyers came in. So that makes them strong levels. And right now, if you just pay attention to that, you're ahead of most traders already because you have a good idea of where prices may turn around. And last but not least, if it gets a full 100% extension from this uh, low to high, it puts us out at 111. And I don't know if 111, excuse me, let's say split the split. Yeah, actually 111, look over here. Yep, that was a breakout area also from about 2015. Yeah, amazing. Uh, I'm always amazed at how well the Fibonacci's, in fact, do work on defining where things are probably going to do a reversal. So that's what we've got going on with the indexes. I will show you one more, and that is the Russell. The Russell is behaving a little bit better. As you can see, it pushed up almost to the downtrend line and then reversed back down. All three indexes are working off of a bullish engulfing signal, just to, uh, to keep, you know, in, in reality. On the weekly IWM, we've got one, two, three weeks worth of spinning top slash spinning top dojis. Positive divergence on the TSI, positive di big positive divergence on the TSI on the uh, uh, daily charts. Two-line cluster on the monthly chart. So who knows? The Russell may lead us out of the debacle. <laughs> we, we shall see. So uh, the, the other thing I wanted to take a look at real quick is... Um, if you are trading, and here's one of the, the uh, entities that I, I like to trade, and we track this quite closely. And what it is, is we track the uh, XOP. XOP is the uh, oil exploration uh, fib. And as you can see, it ran right up, hit the downtrend line, and reversed and moved down. So... What I was looking at uh, last week, I called it out to our uh, premium and our autopilot trading members. I said, hey, look, if this runs up here and, and basically stalls out right here, we want to be you know, into a trade on XOP or the oil exploration uh, entity. But instead of trading that, we want to be looking at trading drip. Now, this is what I like, and this is with the kind of condition of the market right now is drip set it itself up very well. Drip pulled back down into this pass low. And so this day right here, let me draw that for you. Okay, this was Friday last week. No, this was Friday last week. And I basically, so as it came back up, it hit the, uh, and I said, if I pull back down into this past level at about 1350-ish, 1325-ish, uh, go ahead and get me in a trade. And sure enough, we hit that yesterday and triggered in at, uh, number on that, we triggered in at, I think it was 13, uh, let's see, 
1355. Yeah, about 1355. Uh, also, we get a little bit lower, uh, 1366 today, 1355. But we have our, our, our um, orders already, if it's filled on the long side, our sell orders kick in conditionally. And we have our stop loss and our first profit target, which is 10%. So this automatically took place. And with the conditions of the market, it's so sweet to be in this. And I'm traveling. I was on an airplane during almost this whole uh, deal yesterday. And so I missed all of this. But my, trip, my trades triggered for me. And this morning, it rallied up, hit my 10%. It kicked in, and then automatically then I had I adjust my, all the only thing I had to do today on drip was adjust my trailing stop. And I change it to a 10% trailing stop so that it will be a break-even trade uh, the rest of the way out. So that's the way I love to trade it. And again, these leveraged ETFs and um, inverse ETFs, are something that I want to keep my eye on, especially with the volatility in the market as it is currently. So that's all I have today, folks. Uh, I hope you like the tips that we provided. Let me go over here to the. Uh, let me go ahead and. Uh, but that's all we have for today. I uh, and like I said, I'm traveling. I'm getting ready to go to a. Uh, actually, a. I'm getting ready to go out to a. Uh, to a uh, party here in Bakersfield, California, and it is a uh, engagement party for Michelle's twin sister. So, hey, if you're looking to fish with a big fish swim, and one of the best way to do that is to find out about autopilot trading. Here's a link down here. I'll take you to autopilot trading and show you how it works, but also. Uh, let you take a test drive. Uh, it's a great, it, we, or definitely, as you can see, beating the heck out of the indexes this year. And so, you know, if you're struggling with not knowing when and where and how to enter a position, Autopilot can be for you because I, sh I share with you seven trades every week that show you exactly where I'm entering, exactly where I'm exiting. And so it removes the guest work and saves you a heck of a lot of time. So, Go on over, check out Autopilot Trader. There's a QR code that'll take you there. So that's it for today. Hey, thank you so much for joining. I, again, uh, I will be traveling for the next two weeks. Next week will be a recorded session also. But I just want to say thank you so much. Send out my aloha and my love. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Again, protect your capital and protect your profits. Aloha.